Hello, everybody. This is a lecture on uh, tips for reading and understanding works of literature. This is specifically for English 101. Um, English 102, you'll have a slightly different video with a longer story. But the basics of what we're going um, to be examining here is observations for basic understanding. Um, we'll also be looking at how to take notes on a story and how to start developing your ideas for a paper. Um, in English 101, our focus is um, on doing a compare and contrast type paper, um, whereas in 102, you have uh, multiple types of um, things you're going to try to accomplish. Okay, so in order to look at how to read a story, I think it's effective to take a look um, at a story itself. So we're going to use uh, the story of an hour, which is in the English 101 textbook in chapter 22. But just a little bit of background. Remember from active reading that we um, want to examine uh, the background on the work, maybe look at the author's biography and all that sort of stuff. So we're doing that right here. Um, the story of an hour by Kate Chopin. Or Ch Chopin. Um, it was published in 1894, so we're starting to gain some traction in um, the suffrage movement and, and women getting more rights. Uh, they wouldn't be able, women wouldn't be able to vote in this country until 1920, but um, it's still um, starting to move that way. She was married to Cajun, lived both in Louisiana and Missouri, um, but prior to 1920, women were essentially property of their husbands. Um, any assets that a woman brought to a marriage, um, her husband would get um, charge of as soon as they were married, with a few exceptions. Um, so I think this is important context to understand Mrs. Mallard, and how she feels about her husband. She doesn't necessarily hate her husband, um, but uh, I think the freedom that she talks about in the story is quite um, related to the sense of being able to do what she wants to do now um, that she thinks she's no longer married. Uh, when this story was written, um, divorce was still not legal in most states. Um, it wasn't legal in most countries. Once you're married, you're married. Um, so, you know, a lot of people would say, well, if she was unhappy in her marriage, why didn't she just get divorced? Well, she probably couldn't, um, which, you know, creates its own issues. And just a note, when you're writing about a story in a paper, put it in quotation marks, as you see here, uh, the story of an hour, um, and not underlined or in italics. Um, underlined or italics indicates a longer work, like a novel, um, a full-length play rather than a one-act play, etc. So make sure that you're writing about the story correctly. Okay. So, um, you should follow along as you're listening to it, but go ahead and use this link. I'm going to put a copy of this link in um, the details or the um, description of this video. Um, so, you can just go ahead and pause the video and go to this link to listen to the story. So, I'm going to pause for a second so you can pause this video. Okay. So back to the video. Um, I hope you paused it and listened to the story um, because, you know, we all learn in different ways and there's different things you're going to notice listening to the story and reading along um, than you would uh, just as, um, you know, kind of going through it as you're reading for the class. So let's take a look at the ways that we can make good observations to be prepared to write about or talk about or analyze literature. One of the biggest problems students have um, is going to be struggles to understand the work. So that's probably the biggest um, issue that I get feedback on from students is uh, having difficulty understanding um, fiction, a lot of times poetry, but really all works of literature. So this is a process that will help you understand the works better. It will help you avoid frustration, make you better prepared to write an effective literary analysis. Now, you know, um, breaking down the story uh, into manageable chunks will help you understand it better 
um, and also give you better ideas because you know you're gonna have to know the story pretty well to be able to contribute effectively to your group um, or to your own comparison. Okay, so first step, you need to explain words, situation, and concepts. So as you're reading through the story the first time, and I say first time because if you're gonna write on the story, you're gonna probably need to read it at least twice and maybe more, because um, you have to know it frontwards and backwards to write a good essay about it. Um, but write down words that are new or unclear. Use your dictionary to look up words. Everybody's got a phone in their pocket. You can Google a dictionary or you may have a dictionary app already on your phone. Um, but make sure that you're understanding all the words in the book. Don't just skip them because you might miss something critical that's essential to maybe not the plot, but maybe essential to understanding something thematically or it would give you some sort of tool to write about the story. Um, write down questions you have about the story after reading it and bring them up in class. Whether we're in small groups, um, maybe you're watching this in an online class, um, in discussion boards, uh, there's lots of places where you can ask me questions or you could just send me an email or um, uh, text message, all those sorts of things if you have questions about your story, if you don't understand something. Okay, so next step, what's happening in the work? So you've read this, the story once, you've looked up all the words you don't know. So some of the things you should be asking yourself about the story. What is the setting and what does it show? You know, we don't know exactly where um, this is, but um, in Chopin's story, it takes place in a two-story house. Well, that indicates that, you know, this isn't necessarily a poor family. It takes place during springtime. Springtime can often be symbolic of many things. Um, you know, he's got an important enough job to travel with. So we have a lot of clues from the setting that are going to tell us quite a bit about the story. Who's the major figure or protagonist in the story? Now, there's a protagonist in the story and an antagonist. The protagonist is always going to be a character. In this case, it's clearly Mrs. Mallard. It's, you know, the story is about her. Um, antagonist, we could debate a little bit, but an antagonist is a character or a force acting against the protagonist. And the reason why I say we could debate a little bit about the antagonist is, of course, you could say her husband, because that's what, you know, seeing him is what causes her to die at the end of the story. But by the same token, you know, if it's a character or a force, you know, would the accepted um, views of male and female relationships by the society we see in the story, would that maybe be the antagonist or expectations? Maybe you could even say her heart is the antagonist. So um, you can justify really a reading on any of those uh, directions. What, what are some of the relationships that characters have with one another? We only have four characters in the story. And we have the family friend, we have the sister, Mrs. Mallard, and Mr. Mallard in the story. Um, you know, Mrs. Mallard clearly has a relationship with her sister. Her sister appears to be some sort of caretaker for her in some respects. I don't mean like, you know, that she's bed bound or something, but, you know, watches out for her sister, especially where her heart is concerned. What concerns do the characters have? What do they want? Well, we certainly have um, uh, Mrs. Mallard is sad that her husband is gone, but she has this newfound freedom that she didn't realize that she had, and it's a big deal for her. Um, how does the protagonist change in the story? When we're looking at a story, generally speaking, in literary fiction, um, the experience of the story is going to change the narrator in some way. Um, he or she may learn something new, they may change their perspective on something, um, their character may change, you know, who they are as a person may change. Um, but generally speaking, the protagonist goes through some sort of change or epiphany in the story. And I already touched on it, but also ask yourself, who or what is the antagonist? Um, all of these questions are going to help you get a better understanding 
of not only you know the plot and the main ideas of the story, but also what we're supposed to get out of it. Okay, so next slide. Some discussion questions. I'll go through these um, manually to an extent, but you really should do these uh, on your own to see uh, what you come up with. But you know, question one: Describe what you consider to be the story's major theme or themes. A theme is defi defined as a main idea or underlying meaning of a literary work that may be stated directly or indirectly. So really look at um, Mrs. Mallard's thoughts once she locks herself in the, in her room. This is really going to tell you um, what the theme or underlying meaning of the story may be. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes we can look at things as symbolic. Um, it's clearly springtime. And the reason why that's symbolic is the seasons of the year in Western stories can be symbolic um, of many things. Usually, um, winter is a symbol of death um, or darkness. Spring often is a symbol of rebirth. Um, summer is usually um, symbolic of happy times or times where everybody has enough money, food, fulfillment, whatever it might be. Um, and then fall is often symbolic of a decline. You know, um, think of the phrase that, you know, they're in the fall of their life. That means you know, somebody's getting older and getting closer uh, to death. The setting of the story is very limited. It's combined to a large confined largely to a room, staircase, and front door. Does this limitation help express the themes of the story? So once you look at you know, the main themes and decide on those, look at how each of these environments, and I would even add you know, what she sees out the window to this. You know, how does it express the theme that you're seeing going on in the story? What kind of relationships do the Mallards have? Is Brantley Mallard unkind to Louise, or is there some other reason for her saying free, free, free when she hears of his death? How does she feel about him? You know, I, it's clear by the story that she was never mistreated by her husband, um, but she is glad at the opportunity that she's going to have ahead of her, because she even says, there's going to be a funeral, there's going to be a service, she's going to cry, it's going to be upsetting. You know, so clearly she's upset by his death, but um, I think what we can focus on as readers is what she's looking forward to in the future. On question four, it says, what view of marriage does the story present? The story was published in 1894. Does it rep only represent attitudes towards marriage in the 19th century? Or could it equally apply to attitudes about marriage today? That's really up for you to decide as you're going through these questions. Um, and then the last question, the last line of the story is, when the doctors came, they said she had died of heart disease, of, a, of joy that kills. In what ways is this an ironic statement? What is gained by having the doctors make such a statement rather than putting it in the mouths of Josephine or Richards? Josephine is the sister, Richards is the family friend. So think about, you know, how is this ironic? An ironic statement is a statement that has the opposite of its intended meaning. So what did the doctors intend when they said this? But what is the meaning that Chopin wants you to get out of it? That's what you think about as you're looking at the last lines. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so... We've read the story probably twice, once for a general feel of it, and then a second time to look at the components of the story, the characters, the setting, thinking about the themes that are going on, all this sort of stuff. Now we can keep a notebook um, of our reactions, both when we're looking at you know, the themes and the main ideas of the story, but also as we're building toward writing about the story. So. What do you think was most memorable or noteworthy in the story? You may want to write down everything that you remember about the story um, without looking at it, because that's the stuff that stuck with you when you were reading it. How did the story make you feel? 
you know, board is an acceptable answer, but you need to also reach beyond uh, that if uh, you didn't care for the story. I hope you like it. You know, how the story make you feel? It made me feel sad for Mrs. Mallard, but I like the story, whatever it may be. Is there stuff you like or is there stuff you don't like in the story? But don't just leave it, no, I don't like the story. Discuss why you don't like it, because you may be able to incorporate that into an argument in a paper. Are there any parts of the story that are hard to understand? Why? This goes back to you know, asking questions, as we saw in step one. Um, like the writing process, this process can be somewhat fluid. So you may have to take a step back and say, okay, what didn't I really understand? What did I not get in the story? Once you decide that for yourself, then you can move on to writing specific questions that you can bring up in class or via email or what have you to really get me to um, answer your question thoroughly. What surprised you about the story? Why? A lot of literary fiction is going to have a surprise ending of some sort. It may not be, you know, fireworks going off or, you know, blow your mind type of uh, surprise, but there should be a few things that you didn't expect in a good short story. Developing ideas and enlarging your responses. Okay, so we've read it once for a general feeling. Right, a second time, we've written down a bunch of stuff about the situation, what we liked in the story, what we didn't like, who the characters are, protagonists, antagonists, all this sort of stuff. Now it's time to work on developing your ideas into coherent thoughts for a paper. So try to trace developing patterns. What are the conflicts in the story? In modern short stories, if there's no conflict, there's really no story. Um, you know, this is the basis of a lot of our television. You know, from, um, why am I blanking on what they're called? Reality shows to situation comedies. Um, there's always some sort of uh, conflict that has to be resolved by the end of the episode. Um, if not, it might be a two-part episode. But look for things in short stories where you can trace patterns. Um, what is the major conflict in the story? How do they go about resolving it? Write expanded notes about characters, situations, and actions. You wrote notes throughout this, but if anything's striking that you think you can expand into a discussion in your paper, this is the point in the process where you do that. Maybe memorize uh, important, interesting, and well-written passages, or another way to think of it is if you don't want to memorize it, which is fine, go back and mark up, a, say, an interesting paragraph and write notes either in your notebook or in the margin of the book why you think this is interesting. Um, because you know, don't trust yourself to remember everything you thought about the story when you were reading it. You have busy lives and you know, things can get in the way and kind of kick that stuff right out of your brain. Uh, but do always write down questions that come up during your reading. Um, otherwise, you're going to struggle um, to really uh, get through and uh, remember the stuff that you want to remember from the story. Okay, so just to review what we talked about here. Step one in this process, get a basic understanding of the story by being an active reader and being engaged in the text. Next, this is where you start taking notes on the story. Keep a notebook where you can record your impressions, thoughts, and questions about the text. Now that we have notes about the story, we start brainstorming or enlarging our, our ideas to get ready to write about the work, okay? So, pretty simple three-step process. I really hope that this will help you if you've struggled with understanding literature in the past to really um, get in between the lines on a lot of these stories uh, to help you be a successful group member if you're doing a group essay, but to write a successful paper overall. If you have any questions, please let me know as usual. Um, but again, I hope this presentation was a help. And that's all I have for this essay. If I can turn off the video.